Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. In today's episode of Rural Heritage on RFD TV, we visit a new London, Minnesota man who has taken his passion for draft horses and his commitment to faith and family values and combined them in a unique way. Les Graham wrote and published a novel called Jude's Gentle Giants. The, the storyline is, is a fictitious high school young man that has a dream of owning a percher on draft horse. Through an unusual way, God gives him uh, two instead of one little colts, and he has to raise those up, and um, uh, they barely survive, and then he trains them, and he has some enemies in high school that, that despise him because of his faith and because of his family values, and he has to fight these enemies that are out to make his life miserable. Um, and then God keeps putting these arch enemies into his life, and um, you know, I think it's God's way of testing Jude's forgiveness and his faith and, and, uh, and his perseverance and building, building Jude's character. Um, he ends up befriending one of the arch enemies after he helps her, and he ends up taking her to prom at the end of the book. My original intent was I wanted to create a story that would resonate with young boys. That was my original goal. Um, and I, and I, luckily I've accomplished that. It does resonate with young boys. Uh, the blessing behind it beyond that is I have grandma and grandpas reading it. I have uh, grandma and one, one grandma and grandpa that they read a chapter every night before they go to bed and uh, they're begging for the second book. Uh, so that was a blessing and a surprise that here I have adults reading this just as much as I have young adults reading it. I was not raised in a Christian family. Um, some people might call that a religious family, but I was not raised in a Christian family and I I came to my own believing faith in Jesus Christ when I was 36 years old. And um, so after, with that combination and, and then throwing these family stories together with draft horses, I just wanted to write a story of how a Christian family, a functional family, deals with life and how a young Christian high school boy deals with the trials and tribulations of life and, and show that versus my own childhood. A lot of people thought this was a story about Les Graham. It's not. It was easy for me to put my thoughts on paper. I really didn't have a problem with that, and I really enjoyed that process. It was, I, each winter night I would, if I couldn't work on my story, I was you know kind of on edge because I wanted to work on my story. And I looked forward to sitting down and, and I could, honestly say I didn't have writer's block. The words just flowed. Um, it was hard, a little bit hard to give the, the first manuscripts out because of fear of rejection again. Um, now that it's an actual book, it's when a friend of mine buys it uh, from me at a book signing or whatever, it's a little bit humbling to ask your, I mean I don't directly ask, but when your peers buy your product that you created, and what if they don't like it? They spent their money on your project. So it's, it's a little fearful. Um, luckily, I've had nobody say, well, that was a waste of, of time and money. Nobody has even hinted that. For almost 40 years, Rural Heritage Magazine has helped readers borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. The magazine is packed with stories and information about farming and logging with draft animal power, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. If you or someone you know wants to run a self-sufficient, diversified family farm, or just learn how to make a weekend hobby farm more productive, Rural Heritage Magazine is a smart choice. 
Articles cover a wide range of interesting and useful topics and are written by people living on the land doing the work they write about. A one-year subscription is $34.95 for six issues, 24% off the newsstand price. Sign up for two years and save even more. Order online at www.ruralheritage.com or by calling 319-362-3027. That's www.ruralheritage.com or 319-362-3027. Les Graham's novel, Jude's Gentle Giants, tells the story of Jude Bonner, a young man growing up on a farm in rural Minnesota. Jude's dream of owning a team of percher and draft horses is realized in the form of twin colts Pete and Joe. A young man of character, Jude comes into conflict with some of his high school classmates, and he's forced to draw upon his faith in God and the integrity he builds raising and training his horses. Horses, country life, family values, and a reverence for faith. Jude's Gentle Giants offers all these in an interesting and engaging story fit for readers from early teens to their great-grandparents. It's available for purchase on www.lesgram.com or can be ordered at Amazon.com. It's also available for purchase from the publisher, Colfax Publishing, 616 270th Avenue, Northwest, Suite G, New London, Minnesota, 56273. It costs $14.95 plus $3 shipping. For those of people that know horses, you know, if you handle a horse correctly, they bond with you. And, um, and that's not only with draft horses, regular horses do it also. But the draft horse is just so much bigger and majestic, and they're, they're called huge, gentle giants like the book is called. And so just that bond between Jude and his horses and, and, and Pete and Joe do some, some, they use their strength to help Jude once they're broke and getting him out of some, some situations. Um, and that bond is, was fun to write about and my readers are enjoying that. Even if a person doesn't like horses uh, or any animal, when, when you work with an animal, you've got to learn to give and take. And um, because of the horse's personality or whatever, and so it's just a good learning curve and, and that did give me many angles to write from from those perspectives. I promote my book by taking Pete and Joe to the local book signings. Pete and Joe are my percher on draft horses. They're the main characters of the book. And so they, locally, they go to book signings with me and I put them in a 12 by 12 box stall corral thing and uh, they draw quite a crowd. I learned on my own and through trial and error and, and you certainly have some bumps in the road on that I've had uh, probably three or four, maybe five runaways. And you learn a lot after a runaway. You're pretty humbled after a runaway. And all the runaways have been my fault, not my horse's fault, every one of them. I put the horses in a situation where they weren't ready for. And um, so yeah, you learn. And, and luckily God got me through alive those runaways. And, um, and now uh, you look back and you look back at your mistakes and, and you try not to repeat them. I, I do my own uh, farrier work um, and I, I practice what, what's called the natural hoof trim with the Mustang roll and um, I'm getting a little older as you can tell and uh, so the rasp and the nippers were becoming difficult for me to do and um, so I switched over to an angle grinder and Pete and Joe get trimmed. I try to do it religiously every four weeks then you don't have to trim so much off. And um, when it gets cold, I kind of refuse to do it. I, I just do not like to do it when it's cold. So right now they're a little overdue on their feet. And, um, but they stand untied and I grind away at their feet. And it's, it's way better on my back with a grinder. 
and way easier on my forearm muscles and stuff to use a grinder than, than the nippers and the rasp. Um, and if, when I take Pete and Joe out, if the people that study horses' feet, they'll look at them and say, hey, who does your feet? They're nice looking feet. In the winter of 1999-2000, my son Ben and I took our first team of geldings, Ben and Lad, and we logged out a, a timber frame barn uh, out of the woods. We had to drive them six miles north and, um, and log all day, then drive them back home. And they were in pretty good shape that winter. And we logged that whole winter, and in, in the fall of 2000, uh, October of 2000, we, we raised that frame. That whole summer, we did what we called cut the frame, and that's creating a timber frame structure. And a timber frame structure is, is mortise and tenon joints with wooden pegs holding the joints. No nails hold the frame. That barn is 36 by 42, and it has a working hay mow in it. And then October 10th, I think it was, we had an old-fashioned barn raising where we had uh, just men and, and block and tackle and stuff going, and we raised that frame in one day and had siding on two sides of it by the end of that day. Uh, the next day, we put the roof on it and, and the rest of the siding on. And then throughout that winter and the next spring, I kind of finished the barn, um, my son and I did and uh, now, now we use it as a barn. And the hay mow is a working hay mow. We used to put up loose hay into it, and now we put up small squares into it. Why didn't you just put up a barn, whole barn? Well, you're not supposed to ask me that question, but <laughs> that's a good question. I live in a timber frame barn, and uh, you're, you're seeing part of it right now. And um, so timber, frame, timber framing is kind of in my blood. And uh, I like to do things that are unique. Uh, and timber framing is unique, and uh, a timber frame has, uh, has a classy look to it, has, uh, I'm trying to think of, has character. Uh, a timber frame has a lot of character to it, and it's, it's, not, it's something I'll tell my grandkids, or my grandkids will say, hopefully someday, hey, my grandpa built that barn from scratch. Um, so, Anybody can put up a pole barn, not too many people can put up a timber frame. And to say I logged it with a team of horses adds that much value to it. Les Graham's novel, Jude's Gentle Giants, tells the story of Jude Bonner, a young man growing up on a farm in rural Minnesota. Jude's dream of owning a team of percher and draft horses is realized in the form of twin colts Pete and Joe. A young man of character, Jude comes into conflict with some of his high school classmates, and he's forced to draw upon his faith in God and the integrity he builds raising and training his horses. Horses, country life, family values, and a reverence for faith, Jude's Gentle Giants offers all these in an interesting and engaging story fit for readers from early teens to their great-grandparents. It's available for purchase on www.lesgram.com or can be ordered at amazon.com. It's also available for purchase from the publisher, Colfax Publishing, 616 270th Avenue, Northwest, Suite G, New London, Minnesota, 56273. It costs $14.95 plus $3 shipping. The second book is called Surrendering the Reins. It's a sequel to Jude's Gentle Giants. It continues the story. I hope to have it out in March of 2015, which is just right around the corner. Um, and the, the evolution of that is kind of a, a neat story is my first manuscript was too long. Some of my test readers and my first or my main editor said, Les, it's, we love the story, but it's too long. We got to cut it in half and, and create two books if you wish. And that was a hard pill to swallow. I, after inventing this, creating this, I didn't want it to be altered, you know. And I finally agreed with them, and so we cut it in half. I had to add to the first to make it more complete, and I had to add quite a bit to the second to make it more, more complete. So now I'll end up with two books in the, in the end. Writing a book is, that was kind of the fun part for me. I'm assuming it's the fun part for most people. Um, the editing, 
uh, gets a little difficult at times. You have to trust your editors and believe in them, and that's hard for me to do. At least I'm assuming it's hard for most readers to do. Uh, but they are they do play a very important role, and it's it's a monotonous process where you have to take back all their red ink and fix it, and you get a little tired of that. Um, and then it t certainly tests your patience on time. You, you think that this can happen like that, and it doesn't. And uh, so that was a learning curve on time and understanding how much time it takes. And then uh, turning it into a book and uh, getting it out in the world is, was more time and money. And uh, promoting it and... Um, you know, in fantasy, in my fantasy mind, I just thought people would flock to you and, and buy books by the dozens and you'd be rich and famous and all those things. And and it, and it, it takes time and effort and it's kind of some blood, sweat and tears. It's a part that I really don't enjoy as much as I did writing it. Uh, kind of a pain. Well, God's doing it with me wow. and, and my wife, Kathy, and Pete and Joe. And uh, yesterday we had kind of a book signing and... One of my young fans was there working uh, the, the book sales with my wife Kathy while I was out giving rides with Pete and Joel. Back when we built the timber frame from scratch with the horses and logged it out, Ben and Lad, I had dropped a 38 foot oak tree that was very straight. And um, it was 23 inches at the base and we all know that oak is very heavy. And uh, hooked up Ben and Lad to that, that beast of a log and um, we started moving it and the evener stick broke. And uh, so I had enough log chains that I hooked each single tree back to the, the butt of the tree. And Ben and Lad snaked that 38 foot oak tree out of the woods. We had a little logging skid underneath it at the time to keep the, keep the butt out of the ground. But they were scratching pretty hard and I'd stop them like every 30 yards and rest them. And it took them about five stops to get that oak log to the south end of the woods, that, that scene I portray in the second book with Pete and Joe pulling that same log out. And um, my son and I took that particular log and that's the one log in that barn that we hand hewed. Everything else we took to a sawmill and sawed, but we squared that beam up with, with an ax and uh, that was quite a chore. Um, by the end of the day we were both shot and you have to get two sides off of a log if you're going to hand hew it. If you only do one side then it's going to warp on you. So we had to minimum get two sides off and we did get two sides off in one day then we finished it off on another day but that's a hand hewn beam in that barn that we're pretty proud of. These are frame raising mallets that I made for the barn raising and they're pretty stout and they were kind of neat to make. But you, you sit and swing and, and force a, a beam into, a, into a, a post or vice versa. And uh, people kind of laugh at them when they first came to a, come to a frame raising, but everybody's asking, where's one of them big wooden mallets? To get them beams from that, from, from my landing point, as you called it, there I hauled them on a running gear. And I loaded them and this was, I was a little bit younger at the time. I loaded them with a can hook up ramps, no, no skid steer. I assume you'd see a lot of people my age at, at that type of a movie. I think they connect with it way better than dragons and serpents and wizards and whatever's out there. Um, so back in the, back in the, uh, Walt Disney era when I was a kid you could you could watch them and and not worry about what your kids were gonna see
Street. The timber frame barn that we have, um, again, we live in Minnesota. This, this frame came from Ohio. Uh, that's where I grew up. This barn was probably three, four miles from where I grew up, and it was going to be tore down for a golf course, and I was able to get it, if I was to t could tear it down in a, in a timely fashion, I was able to retrieve it. So I tore it down in two weeks and hauled it up here and, and raised it back up as a, as a timber frame home. And uh, we had 40 men working that day. Um, I think I had 480 man hours in one day of raising a frame. And on this frame, we were able to get the whole frame up, all the roof decking on, and, and the haymow decking on, on both haymows uh, in, in, in one day and uh, we made the TV station that day also. And um, then my wife and I did all of our own work except for taping the sheetrock. Uh, Kathy actually wired half the house at the time. And uh, about a year later from the frame raising, we moved in. Uh, we didn't have kitchen cupboards at the time and I think a few light fixtures and we paid for that as we, as we went. I bought Pete and Joe from right off the mares from a gentleman named Art Ellers in Piers, Minnesota. He's bred Percherons forever. And I brought him home when we weaned him from their mares. And then I trained him up and uh, had a few bumps in the road with that, which were my fault. And uh, Gene Luxercamp helped me straighten him out a little bit. I had needed his assistance there a little bit. And, um, but anyway, they're fully broke now. They're, we've, we've trained them to ride and to drive. They're nine years old, and they're pretty bulletproof. Les Graham's novel, Jude's Gentle Giants, tells the story of Jude Bonner, a young man growing up on a farm in rural Minnesota. Jude's dream of owning a team of percher and draft horses is realized in the form of twin colts Pete and Joe. A young man of character, Jude comes into conflict with some of his high school classmates, and he's forced to draw upon his faith in God and the integrity he builds raising and training his horses. Horses, country life, family values, and a reverence for faith Jude's Gentle Giants offers all these in an interesting and engaging story fit for readers from early teens to their great-grandparents. It's available for purchase on www.lesgram.com or can be ordered at amazon.com. It's also available for purchase from the publisher, Colfax Publishing, 616 270th Avenue, Northwest, Suite G, New London, Minnesota, 56273. It costs $14.95 plus $3 shipping. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.